Someday at Christmas, men won't be boys, playing with bombs like kids play with toys. One warm December, our hearts will see a world where men are free and women and everyone else. Someday at Christmas, there'll be no wars when we'll have learned what Christmas is for. When we have found what life's really worth, there'll be peace on earth. Someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where men are free. Maybe not in time for you and me, but someday at Christmas time. Someday at Christmas we'll see a land with no hungry children, no empty hand. One happy morning people will share a world where people care. Someday at Christmas there'll be no tears where all men are equal and none have fears. One shining moment, one prayer away from our world today. There's only two more stanzas. Someday all our dreams will come to be. Someday in a world where people are free, not in time for you and me, but someday at Christmas time. The rest is just oh, one more that's unique. Someday at Christmas, man will not fail. Hello, Elon. Hate will be gone and love will prevail. Someday a new world that we can start with hope in every heart. <laughs> that is... Someday at Christmas by Stevie Wonder, which I could not play because, of course, it would get taken down because, uh, you know, the algorithm hates music. Um, I love that song. I that I song I play it. I song I play that every um, mass Christ. And it's beautiful. And I encourage everyone to listen to it. Um, and the garbage truck is right outside the door. Why are there four different trucks for every, like, why are there three trucks for all the trash? Why can't it just be one truck, y'all? One truck. Un camion. Oh, my God. Welcome to the Bituation Room podcast show live stream. I'm your host, Francesca Fiorentini. You've seen me on my show and other shows alike. Um, super happy to have you here. Uh, happy holidays. Happy Hanukkah. Almost happy Christmas. Um, I hope everyone is good. I hope you have made all of your connecting flights and uh, that, you know, you have done your last minute shopping slash realized you could just write a nice card, I guess. Or like wrap that thing that you were like, do you like this? Because I'm doing that with my mom. Do you like this? Do you want this? I'm going to wrap it. <laughs> Here you go. That's not a surprise. We have such a fucking good show for you. John Idarola of The Damage Report on TYT is here. He is going to be joining me. We're going to talk about the January 6th conclusions, the criminal referrals. Uh, we're also going to be talking about Elon Musk and all the policy changes uh, on Twitter slash not policy changes slash I don't know what day. What, how am I feeling? What's the weather like in this vacuum that I live in? Uh, also, comedian Sarah Schaefer is going to be joining us later on. And we're going to be talking about Nepo babies. That's right. All the. Famous people's children, the celebrity children that have had a leg up, have had a shoe in, have um, been endowed with beautiful cheekbones and lots of money and uh, therefore have gotten far in their respective fields. Do we hate them? Do we love them? And if we could save just one, who would we save? Everyone chime in, join in. Uh, speaking of chiming and joining, make sure you're subscribed to this channel right now because um, this is there's a lot of good shit. All right. A lot of good shit on this channel. Uh, let's re reach 40,000 before the end of the year. Not going to happen, but I would love to have it happen. Um, and like the stream, share the stream, subscribe right now. If you're on Twitch, sup. Thank you so much for being here and for subscribing as well. If you're listening as a podcast, good on you. You know, just uh, keep your eyes, save your eyes. Why watch when you can hear? Um, make sure to give this podcast five stars on iTunes and we'll going, we'll going to do, see, you know what? I got eight hours of sleep and I think I speak worse than had I got only six. We are going to do a bonus bish because Avatar 2 is out. And as a big old fan of Avatar 1, the same critiques that were lobbied at Avatar 1 are coming back, which is this is an appropriation and even a disrespect of indigenous culture, indigenous story, the story of colonialism. Um, and I want to know, what do you guys think? Have you seen Avatar 1 and 2? Let's discuss it. Let's talk about who's saying what. Um, how do we feel about it? 
Patreon.com slash Bitchuation Room is where you go to get that conversation and all bonus bitches um, every single goddamn week. No, we're not taking a break next week. The 27th, we will be on. I will be on. Um, and you also get bonus uh, perks, all kinds of perks, including 20% off all merch, bitchuationroom.com for all of your merchandise needs. I don't know if you checked it out. You got Frantifa stickers. You got Bituation Room stickers. You got shirts. You got tote bags. I'm working on the bitch caps, y'all. Again, I need to know. I think everyone has their hat preference. Mine would be like a dad cap, like a soft dad cap. I feel like that generally looks good on everybody, but you never know. Um, also, finally, and I guess I'm going to bring him in, but uh, my next guest is also going to be my guest live in San Francisco in, uh, for his SF Sketch Fest, with the, which is a comedy festival. He is the host, one of the main producers uh, of the show, The Damage Report. He's also got Peanut Butter Storytime, which is where he gets all of his creative yayas out. He is a creative writer. He's an author. Um and he will be live with me again for Sketchfest, January 22nd at 8 p.m. John Idarola, what is up? It's good to see you. Haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> nice to be back. Thank that you. is a joke because every Monday I join John on the Damage Report. She does. That's great. It was so it's good to have you here. Thanks every thanks to the Dragon Squad. You know when I do live shows, John, the Dragon Squ Squad rolls deep. I love that they do. I mean, I, I think that they've been fans of you for a very long time independently. But yeah, I know it, it, we, we used to do some like live meetups. And obviously that's been difficult in the past few years. So I think that there's like a there's a thirst for it. Oh, they're they're thirsty as fuck, dude. I mean, they really are thirsty. <laughs> uh, one woman shout out. I don't remember your name, but she straight up flashed me. She was trying to show me that she was wearing her damage report shirt underneath her habituation room shirt. But mm -hmm. I got bra instead. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's it could be worse <laughs> or better. Um, no, it was mm -hmm. the most adorable thing that was in Portland. I Shout had out. that happen when I was trying to show off my habituation room boxers once, and I hadn't been wearing them, so it was it was unfortunate. First of all, they would be boxer briefs, of course, if we ever do them. <laughs> um, boxers. God, what are we thirteen? Um, John, we start. <laughs> How? Wait. How many 13-year-old boys' underwear are you sampling? Many, <laughs> many, You shouldn't plenty. have any idea. <laughs> you don't want to know who knows the underwear <laughs> habits of Gen Z boys, Francesca Fiorentini. Look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean into the groomer label, okay? Mm. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know why. I just it was like when I was 13, it was like, like it was because I had an older brother, but it was also like, I feel like boys started to be like, I don't wear tidy whities I wear boxers. And That's then they would true. show them because it was the 90s and it was like, I'm going to wear them really, you know, my pants really low. And That's then I'm, true. it's mostly going to be boxer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's true. That was a look. That was, was that was a look. I think it should come back. TikTok, if you're listening. Hello, TikTok. I'm like my mom. Hi, is this TikTok? Um, <laughs> John, we start off this show in the same way, uh, that we always do, which is, you know, on a, just a real negative note and ask, uh, what are you bitching about? Okay, John, I want to subject you to an article that I don't know if you were privy to, or if you were, I feel like we need to give it more attention. Um, it's not just that Kirsten Cinema has declared she's now an independent. And um, we're just so bipartisan and I need to be able to collect money from both sides of the aisle. Um, and fossil fuel companies have been really raring to go. Um, but we also found out this week that Kirsten Cinema has a side hustle, you people. Side hustle. And this is from Christina Catarucci from Slate, who did a little deep dive into probably a, not a not a crucial, not a critical story. It's not a climate change story. but she basically found out that someone under the same name as Kirsten Cinema, which is the most Gen X thing you could do, not even trying to like hide your name or whatever, has been selling designer goods on Facebook Marketplace and has like an incredible rating. And she herself decided to buy some old 
Bottega Veneta shoes, which by the way, look at these corny ass, like the, the, the black and white flowers on the side. Like it's just so Kirsten cinema. She decided, sorry, not, not a Bottega Veneta bag, bag, badgly Mishka. I don't know how to say that bagly Mishka. They're also designer heels. Um, <laughs> So she she figures out that Kirsten Cinema has been openly selling all these clothes and like okay here we go $215 cycling ensemble a $25 trucker hat which is just of course she still wear like Kirsten Cinema is the Von Dutch of the Senate <laughs> still wears this um $115 fitness tracker ring, $80 cycling jersey, $500 bicycle travel case. We know she bikes. She's fairly athletic. She's got a, she's, so she's selling all this stuff. And that not only was she selling it, but she was like responding to this woman's inquiries about the heels in record time. Like her response rate is really mm -hmm. good. Could it be that the same woman who has been voting down a $15 minimum wage, who doesn't have the time to look her own constituents in the eyes while they plead with her to help the Biden agenda, the radical Biden agenda in air quotes. Please, please, please continue things like the child tax credit. Hey, pass the dream act. Do fucking something that yeah. she on Facebook marketplace selling her old designer, ugly ass goods because they don't go with her new different color purple wig. <laughs> uh what do you what do you, you expect her to pay attention you expect her to meet with constituents you expect her to like what she doesn't she has a lot of time on her hands because she doesn't have any obligations to her constituents that frees up tons of time right and like initially i was like this is so funny it's so on brand and like you know this writer is basically like the, we last week were like what would kirsten cinema do were she not in the senate um you know, it seems like she again, I was saying she's like a buyer for Hot Topic or, you know, uh, Forever 21 <laughs> RIP um, or like, you know, she's someone said she was a wedding planner, but clearly like like themed like poodle themed weddings or something awful. Here's what she's doing in her spare time. And initially I thought it was funny. And then I just started to get really mad, like that yeah. someone, a senator, a senator would have this much time on their hands and this is the shit that they're doing like this is what a 16 year old does like mm -hmm. yeah look if this was the only thing like this i wouldn't necessarily mind it it's being kind of th like thrifty wanting to you know save money like you're save contributing to you know rather than people just going and buying more clothes which has a negative environmental impact they're recycling but for me i don't think that this is her side hustle i think she's just a side hustle she's <laughs> interning at a winery and then she's doing a marathon and then she's doing this she's yes. eat pray loving when she should be meeting reading writing legislation voting for things that like she'll find something else in two months she's just living her best life when she's supposed to be doing her damn job yes she Definitely is like starting like a crystal like prayer circle in the Senate to be like, I think we need to bring people together um, more bipartisanship. And so I've got this rose quartz and mm -hmm. um, this, I don't know, turquoise. Those are all the only I, I just go into the crystal shop and I go, hey, which one gives me money? And they're like, I think you mean this precious. Thank you. Bye. Like That's what I do. I obviously pay for it. But uh, and then I go like, isn't it weird that I'm paying for something that's supposed to give me money? Mm -hmm. And then I walk away. If it was a guarantee for money, why are they selling it at all? Exactly. Why don't they just make more? Sell money anyway. Anyway, it's um, just, it's just, she's the worst. She's the, she's the worst, and this makes so much sense. And I get, I just like, I hope people troll the shit out of her on Facebook Marketplace. And it is so perfect that she's on the Facebook marketplace instead of like Poshmark, which I think a lot of people sell stuff on or even like eBay. But the Facebook marketplace is like, it's so Gen Z or Gen, Gen X. Sorry. I forget. Mm -hmm. on a Gen Z. I think they sell it on Snapchat. I think is, is how that works. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. She's uh. Uh. anywho. Um, yeah, go, mm. let's go troll her. Let's go try to like, Dude, if she was on eBay, I'd bid up her shit and then like not pay. You know what I'm saying? Actually. Can I can I say really fast? Yeah. I have very, very rarely sold anything on eBay, let alone a piece of clothing. But I once sold a pair of boots that I got that didn't fit me. So I sold them on eBay. 
I sold them to a guy and like, you know, I don't make a billion dollars. So if I sell a pair of boots for like $200, that's money that matters to me. That's why I'm selling it is because I yeah. can't afford it. Just so I sold it to him and uh, he sent me a message after saying that they were different sizes, which they very much were not. That doesn't make any sense. Why would they be? And so he appealed to eBay to not have to pay me <gasps> and they sided with him. It was just a scam. He just stole the boots effectively, which was a devastating experience for me because I could not afford to lose that money. But now I just hold out hope that, I don't know, maybe that happens to Kirsten Cinema, and she yes. certainly deserves it more than I did. That's what day. we should do. You do. you? Yes. I just actually bought a rug that I think I'm allergic to. So, hey, everyone's crushing it trying to buy, uh, I'm try I buy stuff on OfferUp. <laughs> And I think everyone in the house is allergic to this new rug. It's beautiful, but it is mm. full of allergens. Okay, TMI, let's go into what John is bitching about. John, what's going on with you today? Yeah, normally I bitch about something topical or newsy, but instead I just want to reveal that I'm like an, an old man, I guess. Sure. Uh, so we we talked recently, I think, about, you know, like the the when people think about making content these days, like I had read recently about people's fear that YouTube won't last because the videos are too long. Uh -huh. And so like everybody only likes super quick things, 30 seconds, 60 seconds maximum. Vines. I think YouTube videos aren't long. Like, it's three minutes. It's 10 minutes. Like you don't have that. But right. Then I realized, and I don't even, I, I think YouTube's going to be fine. But if YouTube, <laughs> I think YouTube is in danger. Owned by Google. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think they're going to be fine. And I think that there's always going to be a place for content of that length. Um, then, like, the sort of content that I probably care about even more has no chance, which is uh, the written word. So I'm, I'm going to be the billionth person across multiple decades to complain that, like, I can't conceive of reading being a thing hmm. anymore. And, and look, I did some... Yeah. I did some searching because my fear is I don't I don't generally have people tell me that they've read books like I feel like there are books that we read when we were kids. Maybe kids read a few books these days, but I think that the entertainment available to them is just too consumable. It's too awesome. It's right in your face. Yes. And so the, the reading like le leisure reading of novels, the written actually, word, I think that you, yeah. I, I appreciate this, but I really need you to say like everything sort of a weird old English, like the written <laughs> word ledger. And like, because you sound really elitist books, right now. No, I know, no, but I don't. I don't think that the written word has to be elitist. Oh, there but are libraries it? for now. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> but it is a little bit. I don't know. You libs and your fucking books. I just want. I want that to be a thing. I think that there's value to it. It's. It's one of the reasons that I started writing. But like, are are is anyone going to write a book? Is can the novel survive? In light of everything that's been happening, I know that these are these are stupid concerns. There is a lot more fun, like fundamental stuff. But I just I think that the ability to be alone with something like that, for there to be quiet, for there to be focus, I think that it's lasted for a long time. I think that it has value, and I just I want to be proven wrong, but I can't imagine that it will exist. And then there's the side effect yeah. stuff of we don't really have bookstores anymore. Yes. God knows if there's going to be any funding for libraries. I know. There's no point in ever having a library in your home, which was my dream as a little kid. I don't know. I'm just feeling I'm feeling old, basically. Yo, dude, I feel that. I mean, I read a novel in the last three years. So I've. What'd you read? I don't remember. It was like this scary. Oh, it was called. Um... Goosebumps. It was called. It was called only the only good Indians. It was by Stephen Graham Jones, and it was okay. scary as hell. It was really bizarrely written. It was scary as hell, and I it wasn't three years ago. It was a year ago. So I've read like a novel in a year, which isn't good. But I do think there are you know it's I mean R I P her legacy. But you know um, J K Rowling. There, there, mm -hmm. there are books that break through, right? And I think often what was so brilliant about Harry Potter, and you're right, I have not read a single one. I've told, I admitted that to you recently. <laughs> but what was brilliant about it, it was like, it's like it took like kids to kind of like hip their parents and adults that like, no, 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 this is not just like young adult fiction. This is like really, really good, really, really well written. Yeah, you know, and then it broke through. So like, there are those, and they generally are in your wheelhouse of like sci-fi, fantasy, all that stuff. 
Yeah. Um, By the way, I, I want to give credit to, like, honestly, women for being the only ones that are keeping any reading going whatsoever. <laughs> like, they, first of all, they write the books that break through, whether it's Hunger Games or Twilight or Fifty Shades of Grey what? or the Hunger Games. We They're don't the ones claim... writing it. They're also the ones reading it. We don't claim that that chick. I don't know what. No, name you're is. stuck with J.K. Rowling. If if you want her at her best, you need to have her at her worst. But anyway, um, <laughs> like boys, it's done. Like no no boys read anymore, and that I find that to be devastating. Like the cultural loss to so many people just thinking it's not for them. And I don't know how to fix that. I've occasionally talked about wanting to do something in that area. I just I I hate the idea that that could be like a thing of the past. It's not. It's it's not it's telegrams, scary. it's foundational. It, if having a kid right now and being like, I truly want to hold out like screens from her. I don't want like any screens. And if she needs or has to watch cartoons, it's got to be like, she can't carry the cartoon in her hand. You sit down, you watch your cartoon and then you leave. Like, I want to institute that. We'll see if I'm ever successful. But yeah, the whole thing is like, oh, we're going to read a read to them early. It's like, why? Why? They, nobody reads. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna read to her, but does she have her own phone? I mean, we're working on it, you know. <laughs> yeah. She will not have her own. But two two rays of sunshine before we move on. One is there is a movement, I think, two movements within young people with young people. One because of the book bands that are happening in their schools, they're creating like mm -hmm. band book club groups, so or book clubs. So they're reading these books, um, which if you've seen them, they're just it just says penis like you know a three thousand five hundred times. I mean, there's a reason they were banned, but no. And the other thing is like, I just read, there's another article about like kids who are choosing to not have a smartphone. So they have just yeah. flip phones and flip phones instead. They can make emergency calls, texts, whatever, but they're not like constantly scrolling on, um, you yeah. know, they're sort of, yeah, brain eating death spiral of social media. I like it. I but anyway, all right, everybody read for John's sake. Please. The old man vote. in my day. <laughs> hey, Grandpa. We have a fucking written word. <laughs> um, all right, so have a book. We read. There's nothing like holding a book. That's the other thing I have. Anyway, we'll talk. But I love mm, the feeling, the smell, mm, the look, the feel yeah. of a book. Uh, let's bring in my comedian guest uh, for the hour. Writer and miniaturist. That's right. Miniaturist brilliant seen on mtv comedy central and more gonna do their solo show at the kennedy center on december 29th and in 2023 so please please catch her please welcome sarah schaefer hi sarah, sarah hello welcome yeah god yeah. that background's beautiful mm -hmm. are you in your are you in your work area you look like I'm you've in got my nook i'm in my Work nook. nook situation. Um, John Idarola, I think you need to know Sarah Schaefer because Sarah is, in, you both are incredibly creative uh, and like have awesome imaginations. And Sarah um, literally has created like, you created a mini comedy club and a com mm -hmm. like a show in miniature form with comedians. Yes, I did. I've, I've, I um, work in one twelve scale mainly, which is dollhouse scale. So like, I'll just show you. Yeah, I'm like, what? Compare that to a here's a couch. Adorable. That I made. <laughs> so the easiest way to remember one twelve scale is one inch in this scale equals one foot in real life. Ooh, nice. So it's twelve times smaller. And, what uh, rodent are we talking chinchilla a mouse a mouse a even mouse. smaller like a really small mouse a baby mouse um baby mouse. i know <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i love miniatures i've been collecting them my whole life but it really wasn't until the pandemic where i started trying to make my own stuff and yes i thought you know oh my god how cute would it be to like make a scale model of my trauma and so i made a uh mini comedy club <laughs> <laughs> is that related to something you're bitching about or your i know your one woman show is is related to that but but what are you yeah. bitching about today and in general oh goodness um you know i think uh, in the in the grander scheme, my 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 bitching is very small 
it's <laughs> tiny. <No. laughs> um, I think my uh, big bitch is um, been going on for a while now, which is um, with Hollywood. And I guess it just extends to America in general, which is um, how do you survive in this system as a creative person? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, as a creator yeah <laughs> um i saw someone uh say like kind of complaining about the term content creator it might have even been you um <laughs> i, I do that a lot i've i've definitely complained about it and then we've absorbed the word content to the point where it's now like right. normalized and it's only happened in the last i think couple of years but yeah. Like yes. content creator, the person was saying how we've all agreed to this labor for these large companies. Um, and I know that we might get to more of this in, in a minute, but just um, I was booking this tour for my solo show for next year and we're starting to fill out the dates. And, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a, a famous person. I don't sell it's called in the biz we would call it i'm not a draw i don't mm -hmm. just book i don't automatically sell out a, a even a hundred seat theater like that is a, i have to push i have to work to get a hundred it depends on the city and the situation but um you know you have to be really famous to be a draw like it yeah. really is a, a vast difference you know whether it's through a podcast or being on tv all the time um, and I was, my agent was, my booking agent was kind of like, I mean, he's, I love him, but he was being very realistic. He's like, well, Sarah, I don't know if you can sell out this place where we're talking about whatever. And I was like, I know. And, and I wanted to scream. Cause I was like, so much of it is out of my control. Right. Um, not just like how famous I am or beloved or what those questions, which are so hard to figure out and for anyone. Um, but like social media, like, and how an algorithm mm -hmm. can control whether or not, like, I have so many people every time I say, oh, I, I, I'm going to perform, they go, come to Portland. I'm like, I was there last night. <laughs> like, <laughs> how did, and I posted about it 20 times, like, right. you know, and every comedian I know and, and touring performer has the same frustration, not just uh, performers, but like people selling you know, art or, you know, anything that they're content creators, you know, it, you're such at the whim of yeah. what, what's working today on social media. Uh, what, Absolutely. What company is now pivoting towards 15 second videos? And now every comedian is like, ah, oh, God, I got to make a 15 second video, you know? Yeah. I, it fits. <laughs> the, the, it's, it's gotten incredibly absurd and it is, it was hard enough to make money before and now yeah. it, it feels both easier and harder obviously social yeah. media has opened doors for folks you can monetize but again yeah. it's it trickles like it's not a lot and and, and it's not then, guaranteed oh my god it could change in a heartbeat yeah. tomorrow if they change the algorithm people are screwed um yeah. it all there's a lot of brands that are involved but like it is another way to precarious precar pre make precarious <laughs> an already really precarious art form which is live comedy live performance um already hanging on by a thread but you got to play that game i know someone not going to name his name um who literally in the pandemic created a fake comedy club in his home <laughs> shone a light on himself did stand up bits and then added laughter and he got a million followers on tiktok a million and uh, honestly, valid. Right? <laughs> I mean, if you're like, going to go to the trouble. Respect now. the fucking game. Because that's all it is. is just put up your clips. People dying laughing at your jokes. Da, 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 and then book a room. And a lot of TikTok stars, not all of them, will fill a hundred mm. seater easy, but they don't have any material. They don't right. have that's shit. That's what I was just about to say. I was like, I mean, I'd be interested to see that person headline. <laughs> right. Right. But then yeah. clubs will book based on your... your um, yeah how many followers you have mm -hmm. it's it's crazy yeah i i have an nbc thing which is exciting like i have like there's like a creator accelerator program blah blah, oh, blah. Yeah. my first deadline article mm -hmm. very cool it's like tiktok stars 
I got like 8,000 followers on TikTok. I'm not a TikTok star. I don't right. know how I got included in this group. I'm very thankful. It's cool. It's like they, you know, we're, I'm going to pitch a show, et cetera, et cetera. But like, it's so funny to see. It, it's just so funny to be included in this like mm-hmm. Gen Z group when I'm everything but, and I've got, you know, a fraction of the followers. Um, And it's sad ultimately. Okay. Um. Sarah, I know your one woman show is based on the trauma of stand up as well. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm so I can't wait to see it. Everyone needs to go see it. Um, please, please, please. We'll, we'll, we'll plug it at the end. But we got to get into this week. It's been a while. We don't have you know, we can take our little sweet ass time. But I wrote three semi jokes uh, <laughs> because I've been. I've been behind, y'all. But this was the week where Trump made a giant announcement that he is releasing a limited edition of an NFT, um, which actually uses a copyrighted image, which is (laughs) contrary to the entire premise and principle of NFT artwork. And I just think it's so funny that, like, the, the right tries to own the libs. You know, they're so desperate to own the libs. And they just kept keep getting cucked by like reality, you know, like they just, they just live their lives and they get cucked. They fucking get owned by the fact that no, you can't sell an NFT that's copyrighted. Anywho, I'm definitely buying it. Um, scientists have cracked, <laughs> scientists have cracked the code for nuclear fusion, which means if I understand this correctly, more nuclear power is created than the nuclear waste uh, to, in, to create it. More energy comes out than the energy that goes in to create the reaction. Whatever, book reader. (laughs) This could be a game changer for clean energy by the year 2030, uh, which is the year, ironically, that scientists say we have we have until climate chaos really begins. Like we had 12 years from 2018. That takes us to 2030. We could sit around and wait for this technology or we could just stop buying so much shit. There's also that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and finally, Argentina wins the World Cup in a game that gave me so many gray hairs, giving uh, the retiring Messi his long sought dream of bringing the World Cup back to Argentina for the first time since 1986. I have so many thoughts on this, but I'll spare you for that. Uh, don't at me about all the, you know, con- contradictions. It's a fucking game. Let's enjoy it. Messi wore a bisht, a bisht in the reception ceremony, which is a traditional Arab garb used for special occasions. And now this podcast will be known as the bishtuation room <laughs> for everything else <laughs> this is the week where okay so this is the week where uh the january 6th committee has wrapped up its uh long investigation um into what happened into donald trump's role in stoking the insurrection that we saw into the many different um advisors, attorneys generals is is, um, fake electors is is, all the the proud boys, um, all the different elements, the media's role, all the different elements and and angles on what the hell happened on that day. Um, and they've come away with, yes, Trump should be prosecuted for crimes. They're giving him a criminal referral. I don't know if this works like a like a job referral, you know, is, do they have to like, do they check your like past like, hey, I'm following up about a, a Donald J. Trump. I hear he's crimed in the past and, like, you know, <laughs> like calling his ex-wives and stuff. So here is Jamie Raskin um, presenting uh, rep- Representative Jamie Raskin presenting the four charges that they believe Trump should be charged with. This is the starting point for our analysis today. The first criminal statute we invoke for referral, therefore, is Title 18, Section 1512C, which makes it unlawful for anyone to corruptly obstruct, influence, or impede any official proceeding of the United States government. We believe that the evidence described by my colleagues today and assembled throughout our hearings warrants a criminal referral of former President Donald J. Trump, John Eastman, and others for violations of this statute. The whole purpose and obvious effect of Trump's scheme were to obstruct, influence, and impede this official proceeding, the central moment for the lawful transfer of power 
in the United States. Second, we believe that there is more than sufficient evidence to refer former President Donald J. Trump, John Eastman, and others for violating Title 18, Section 371. This statute makes it a crime to conspire to defraud the United States. In other words, to make an agreement to impair, obstruct, or defeat the lawful functions of the United States government by deceitful or dishonest means. Former President Trump did not engage in a plan to defraud the United States acting alone. He entered into agreements, formal and informal, with several other individuals who assisted him with his criminal objectives. Our report describes in detail the actions of numerous co-conspirators who agreed with and participated in Trump's plan to impair, obstruct, and defeat the certification of President Biden's electoral victory. Okay, that, so he lays out two crimes there. There's four um, in total. Uh, again, obstruction of an official proceeding, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to make a false statement, uh, and inciting, assisting, or giving comfort to an insurrection. Lots of comfort. Lots of comfort. Soft, pillowy comfort. <laughs> um, so it seems like the hardest to convict him on should this go forward, is that last one, the stoking or comforting an insurrection, which to me seems like the most obvious one. We're going to march to the Capitol. We're going to not stop. Um, you know, and, and there's there wasn't like we're going to smear the feces on Nancy Pelosi's desk, but I feel like that was implied. Um, <laughs> where does this go from here? Um, so the Justice Department is already investigating under a special counsel, the notably aggressive prosecutor Jack Smith, great name, uh, who was appointed last month. In messages seen by The Guardian on Monday, former Trump officials acknowledged the strength against Trump. A former administration official said the committee had made a, quote, very solid recommendation, while a former White House official said the facts are compelling. These charges are coming. <laughs> Those are former Trump officials. Clearly, maybe the ones who are not implicated in this. I don't know if that was John Eastman. You guys remember John Eastman was the guy who was like, mm. but it says here in the part of the Constitution I just wrote uh, that actually uh, <laughs> other electors, alternate electors can vote for Trump to continue to be president and to nullify the electors for Biden. So um, that is uh, that's that's John Eastman's role. Lastly, on this, it seems like. AIM is being taken also at Kevin McCarthy, um, Representative Kevin McCarthy, the current House Minority Leader, who aims to become Speaker, <laughs> um, also is in the sights of uh, the panel. Other members are Representative Andy Biggs, thank fuck, uh, Jim Jordan of Ohio, and Scott Perry. There should be more. I mean, Gosar uh, as well. At issue was the refusal of these members to cooperate with the committee, even when subpoenaed to do so. Right. So we've been asking what happens since these folks have not testified I still haven't seen what happened with Ginny Thomas, y'all. That was another hanging thread. But, John, I want to kick it to you. What do you make of these uh, recommendations, these referrals? Um, how important is it that these have come down? And what do you think about what could happen? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad. I feel like you sort of had to at least do this. There's nothing more directly that they can do. Uh, they just have to kick it to the DOJ and and hope that they investigate. Um because this isn't this is even like a step removed from specifically saying he should be charged for these things. That connotation is there, but technically it is you should investigate in these areas because there might be evidence there. It's it's even slightly weaker than it's been presented to be. Mm. Uh, he did he did the things. He he <laughs> he he almost literally did the things. Like comfort and insurrection is supposed to be a sort of metaphor, but no, he was literally sending the messages saying that he loves them and they're very special. He was literally <laughs> comforting them. While they were uh, insurrecting, yeah. <laughs> for me, it's not just it's not just that he organized the people to be there, and it's not just that he sent them to the Capitol. It's as he was watching hour after hour of the violence, he resisted any effort by his own people to have him stop it. Yeah. That I, I I don't know how you get past that. You combine that with the calling Georgia to find find me the eleven thousand votes, then. 
I, I don't know. Do we need robot lawyers? Like, do we need someone Honestly. who is not so crippled by fear of the political implications? Because if, if he can't be convicted for this, then the signal they're sending to whatever proto dictator comes down the pike next is so long as you don't literally say, go kill me, the government, mm -hmm. then you then there's nothing that they can get you on. And that cannot be the standard that we hold, uh, you know, potential authoritarians to. Yes. And even then the government is really broad and uh, there was no specifics in that sort of cr that cry. So um, mm -hmm. I bet that could be parsed as well. Sarah, uh, it seems so obvious that he did all the criming that it was. It, and yet we needed this entire. The entire case to be, I guess, laid out. I don't know who this is for other than like history. Right. It's for some random kid, you know, um, who happens to have one of the last internet connections, you know, <laughs> and can go back and watch the archives and, and say, wow, that was crazy. Uh, but not as crazy as what's happening now, you know? <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah. I mean, I think it's for us, you know, it's for the people that care. Mm -hmm. We all know that the, People who are loyal to Donald Trump, they will never be convinced of, uh, most of them will never be convinced no matter how much smoking. I mean, look, uh, everything that's happened up to this point, the denial already, you know, of, I mean, just things he's said on video, mm -hmm. they will deny that that happened if it made him look bad, you know, like, so there's no convincing of that crowd. Um, and so that's why I'm just sort of, you know, if you don't press charges and we don't like, you know, make like accountability happen, why would you bow to people who couldn't be convinced no matter what, you know, it's like, yeah. why are we, it, it's, we've been in it for a long time. Why are we totally. like, um, you know, everybody's fussing over this small minority of people and, you know, people always, they always go, oh, it's 50, 50. It's 50% red and 50% blue. And it's like, that's a really overly simplified view. There's a much smaller core group that is like this extreme. Yes. And, but they're, any time we concede to them and coddle them, they grow. Yeah. You know, so it's, in my opinion, you gotta, yeah. I think so. There. I think, I mean, that the, exactly. This is, I think it is a loud minority and I, I've, I think I disagree slightly with a take that it's like, it's all Republicans. All Republicans are this crazy. No, I actually think that a lot of them did lose the MAGA thread when specifically around COVID as they were dying um, and also around the January 6th insurrection. And yeah, the revelations are so insane. Like this whole summer, it's been like Trump grabbed the wheel of the Secret Service agent, most likely, and tried to steer himself to the Capitol to like stand on a mound of skulls. Like um, the attorney general, acting attorney general, was told to investigate Italy Gate, which was the theory that satellites in Italy or uh, designed by some Italian were flipping votes of the Dominion voting machines to Biden, right? And they straight up were like watching YouTube videos because the president told them to watch a YouTube video. Um, so it is, it's just so insane. And we got so close. If this isn't grounds for criminally convicting and, and also um, mandating that no longer can any of these people hold office, specifically Donald Trump, I don't, honestly... I give a shit more about Trump than I do any of the lackeys, even though I fucking hate these lackeys. Mm -hmm. Even if Donald Trump can't be prohibited from running for office, then I don't know what kind of a democracy this is. Like, what the fuck? We're so bad. Like, we've known we sucked, but we really suck. Push come to shove. You get feces all over your democracy. And it's like, ooh, <laughs> we got to walk around with doo-doo on us forever now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just all coming back to the uh, the feces, dude. Um, anyway, it is it's like Nelson is laughing at our country, but he's got like those horns and his face painted, and he's the QAnon <laughs> shaman. Just ah! 
Um, so we shall see. Uh, one thing that's interesting is uh, a lot of these politicians who were on the committee are outgoing. So it's the end of the four of the nine members on the panel. And then two others, Cheney and uh, Elaine Luria, Democrat of Virginia, lost their House seats this this midterms. Um, so, you know, we shall see what happens under the new House. It's very curious that they're going after Kevin McCarthy. Um uh, you know, so but a lot of these insurrectionists, a lot of the, these folks, these uh, politicians, they they won their reelection. Um, Wisconsin homie, whose name I'm forgetting deliberately. Um, uh, Wisconsin Senator John, please, Ron Johnson. Thank you, Ron Johnson. Oh, sorry, I just I wanted to somebody on you. the committee. No, no, no. But Ron Johnson, who like had his office was talking with Mike Pence's office about the alternate slate of electors. Yeah, he was reelected. Yep, he's barely had to even answer questions about it. Exactly, exactly. Anywho, um, more to come. But um, at least they, at least we're actually talking about crimes finally. Let's move on, because this was also another week on the hell site of Twitter. Uh, Elon Musk continues to Kendall Roy his way through this purchase. <laughs> just <laughs> L to the OG. Like, he is. <laughs> he needs mm. to rap about this. Like, I can't wait. It will happen. It, I'm um, about to say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. <laughs> we, we know this. The biggest thing, a couple things. Um Musk has been silencing journalists, kicking them from the platform for reporting on him kicking off the account that follows his private jet off uh, off of Twitter, which we also know John and I covered this story. He offered the owner of that account fifty thousand dollars to stop tracking his private jet. And the guy was like, no, I kind of really enjoy doing this. It's like a like a real passion of mine. And so, like, I appreciate <laughs> you, Elon. But like, I like this and it's public information and we should all know. Um so that all sort of un unfolded. Um, and another thing in within that was banning any links to outside social media websites. So this is no Mastodon links, um, no what other, no true social links, strangely, no sort of any of these other like third or fourth party. I believe even Facebook is included in that. But yep. he's very fragile about everyone talking about leaving Twitter on the platform. Um, folks didn't like that. He, they didn't like that. And now uh, he put up a poll that was like, do you guys like this? Should we ban other links? And folks were like, no, we shouldn't ban people from posting other links. And then he tweeted, going forward, ugh, there will be a vote for major policy changes. There will be, uh, my apologies won't happen again. So basically Twitter, sorry, excuse me, Twitter announced it was going to ban these links. Let me just back up. Let's do this. So <laughs> recently, December 12th, Twitter dissolves its Trust and Safety Council, tight, the advisory group around, of around 100 independent civil human rights and other organizations that, that the company formed in 2016 to address hate speech, child exploitation, suicide, self-harm, and other problems on the platform. Beautiful. December 14th, Twitter suspends an account that used publicly available flight data to track Elon Musk's private jet, despite a pledge by the social media platform's new owner to keep it up because of his free speech principles. The account is restored hours later with rules that impose new conditions on all users about sharing anyone's current location. Then the account is suspended again. Great. Then, the, and on the 15th, the accounts of journalists who cover Musk are suspended, among them reporters working for the New York Times, Washington Post, CNN, Voice of America, and other publications. The accounts are restored a day after a Twitter poll that said, I don't know, should we kick these dudes off? December 19th, more than half of 17.5 million users who responded to a Twitter poll created by Musk over whether he should step down as the head of the company voted yes by the time the poll closed. So this was this uh, this was this one. Should you resign? Should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. Fifty seven and a half percent said yes. Forty two and a half percent said no. Who knows how many bots there are? But even with the <laughs> everyone were like was like, yes, you need to you need to go. It's been whiplash, n total whiplash on these policies. And then finally, it's been won up by. Oh, I'm not going to resign because of that poll, because as unfiltered boss one told me, hmm. 
Blue subscribers should be the only ones that can vote in policy-related polls. These are Twitter polls. We actually have skin in the game. We paid $8 to suck your left nut. And Elon Musk replies, good point. Twitter will make that change. (laughs) So, sorry. And then here was, oh, oh, but guys, never fear. Twitter has finally removed the ability to see which device a tweet comes from. Twitter for iPhone, Twitter for Android. So rest Rest assured, you might be getting death threats. You might be actually being doxxed. Uh, you, there is no suicide or child exploitation warnings. But damn it if people know that you have an Android, John Iderola. Well, and by the way, oh, yeah. I found out I found the identity of a, of a cyber stalker years ago based on being able to connect who I thought it was based on the showing the Android thing. Yeah. I was able to narrow it down and figure out, like, it's a complicated story, but at the time I was able to figure out who was stalking me based on it showing that it was coming from an Android. Wow. Because I could track, like, their real account versus the fake one that they were using to harass me. Right. I mean, it's much more, stalkers are much more sophisticated now. This was... This is a simpler time, but I mean, not really. I mean, it's the only more tools. The main cyberbullying that I've experienced was from former TYT host Jimmy Dore um, while he was on a trip in Italy. And uh, Matt Bender of uh, the Majority Report, and Matt Bender also was one of the journalists who was uh, suspended by Elon Musk, did a whole back channeling using like the Twitter for iPhone or Android thing and also the like carrier of where Jimmy Dore was posting from to show that Dore was using these fake bot accounts to troll me. Like he would troll me and then he would log into his fake bot accounts to troll me. It's very cute. Adorable. But, but yeah, effectively Sarah, your, your story is, it's not, um, it's exactly what's happening. It's like the, the less, there's less of a footprint or in a trail to find out how and who might be stalking folks online. I mean, it was already so such a cesspool of of where abuse could be rampant and unchecked. It was so easy to, I mean, I, I like don't even want to speak about what I've dealt with because I'm so at this point, so conditioned to never talk about it because every time I mention it, it makes the problem worse. Yeah. But, when you there, this is what I always said. There are so many people who suffer in silence on social media because if they draw attention to what's been going on, it makes the problem worse. If somebody is coming at, like stalking you, essentially, it can escalate things. Oh my god! Especially if they've so got hard. Yeah. If, especially if they've got bot armies and the same thing. I mean, we're talking about four right. years ago that door was like, you know, trolling me. He had all these bots. He had all these people supporting him. It was during the Syrian civil war. And only now am I like super comfortable talking about it online yeah. um, because I know there won't be a million reaction videos. Although who knows? He could like search his name. Someone, some troll in the right. comments could be like, look at this video. You know what I mean? Like this is what happens. And then right. you, you're, it's like it's like trying like fucking Glenn Greenwald is now a joke, but at a certain time, if you went after Glenn Greenwald, um, you would ha- you'd be screwed for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yeah. Um, well, John- that's, that's what I was just gonna say. It was like Twitter was already, yeah, such a nasty place. Yes. And now it is a nasty place that is also being run by this like King Joffrey, and yes. it's literally just about king joffrey now like my whole feed is just about what he's doing so yes <laughs> it's like not even and i've been on um you know and everybody's got their new f- platform that they're into but i i've been on Ma- i've tried them all but i i'm on mastodon the most mm-hmm. and i'm getting used to it and i'm it's so much more pleasant yeah. because yeah. i you know part of it is i don't i'm not locked into the whatever algorithm i'm in now in twitter but mm. it's just I'm like following accounts of a guy who just takes pictures of squirrels, you know. <laughs> like it's I just love it. really <laughs> pleasant and sweet. John, th- thoughts here on this like back and forth ping pong policy? Will can he just yeah. let it go? Uh, I think that he might be forced to at least directly let it go, just because you know of what's happening with Tesla. Like he wants to be in charge of Twitter, but he also likes being rich, and he likes being in charge of Tesla and. 
I just checked. Uh, Tesla's stock price has been dropping all year. Everybody knows that. And more recently, it's been dropping. Everybody knows that. It's dropped $10 a share today. Jesus. It is down over 60% from the beginning of this year. That is devastating. Not only to potentially his ability to stay the head of Tesla, because they might have to do something eventually, but any perception that he's a competent manager, let alone a Tony Stark-level genius. Um, with, with the pollst... Oh, by the way, he let some of the journalists back. Let's be clear. He has not let all the journalists back. Lynette Lopez, who's been doing critical coverage of him for more than four years at this point, and he has personally attacked on Twitter years ago, is still suspended. She's going to be on my show, The Damage Report, tomorrow. We're going to be talking about that. Um, yeah. He's been viciously attacking her for years. There's no case to be made that she doxed him. Just amongst other bannings, he banned her too, and she's still banned. So he hates transparency. He hates the First Amendment. Let's be clear about that. With with the poll, it's not just that literally any right winger giving him an idea immediately he'll agree with and then say that it needs to be implemented. That's mm -hmm. a weird way to manage. Normally, you would have a process. Um, it's not just that he appears to have wikied poll tax and decided that's a good thing. I think I'm going to institute that. Or even just that, what is this poll supposed to measure if the only people that can vote in it are the people who feel comfortable giving you money right now? <laughs> like democracy, what is that to be representative of real but democracy. Then, exactly. And there's one joke level beyond that, which is Elon Musk will never do something he doesn't otherwise want to do just because a poll tells him he has to. Of course. It, that's just not how those are going to work. The entire thing is like a, a five layered sham. Yep. It's, it's like when you're very Trumpian. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the most Trumpian. And the and the thing yeah. that has been so good about this year is that or two years, I guess, is that Trump has been off Twitter. Mm -hmm. It's been so much better of a place without Donald Trump on Twitter driving just like the conversation constantly. And it was a little funny in the beginning when when Elon was driving the conversation. He already was before this. Remember when he would just tweet oh, yeah. out anti-trans stuff, tweet out stuff about masculinities, fucking sperm. Mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever the hell is, he's uh, is on his mind. Boobies or whatever he's, you know, joke he's making. Like, Boobies. yeah, yeah. He's like, he, he basically, he's the equivalent of like typing in boobs into a calculator and putting <laughs> it upside down, you know, or like 8008 five what i'm like um and like he was already driving the conversation and now it is non-stop and i have to say that between him and trump i am so fucking done with these like megalomaniacal babies driving every single inch of our discussion it's almost it's almost at least more permissible now that he owns the platform whereas before it was like we don't owe you anything and then you just sort of i'll just see like why are you know why are socks trending? And it's like, oh, it's because Elon, um, he wears two <laughs> left socks. And you're like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Who cares? <laughs> um, so, but I, I, I just need it to be over. I need, I need this to be done. I think everyone, Sarah, an option is to mute the words Elon and Musk. I think the mute option still works. However, a lot of people, and I got, you know, I'm guilty of this yeah. is because I'm always trying to avoid being harassed online. I sure. will be silenced. Like I really truly will be silenced. Right. Like, you self, you self -censor. Like, yeah. um, is that I use, you know, like, uh, EL asterisks in, or I, Elon Musk, or, you know, I, 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 I right. do a code word. And then I re realize, oh, people who don't want to see it are now seeing it. But and so it's like you're damned if you do. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. He is searching his name. E L oh, yeah. asterisk uh, N. Uh, um, anyway, we'll see what the next week brings with these ridiculous goodies. In the meantime, I'm on Mastodon, but I joined like the green server. And I don't know why I'm on the greens. I don't know what the servers do. I don't I don't understand it yet either. I'm on it technically. No, post. I, I literally just you just sign up for one and I'm on it. But I see anything and everything that I want to see and I'm still like learning it. But I'm yeah, I think it's it's just a hard it's a barrier of entry. I would compare it to like crocheting, crocheting <laughs> hard to learn, easy to master knitting, easy to learn, hard to master. So yes. you know, you can, it's like uh, skiing and snowboarding, snowboarding, hard to learn 
uh well whatever the point is skiing yeah. is easier when you start snowboarding super hard when you start um so it's hard to get started and get into but once you're in it i think and i mean but I, we'll see which 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 platform rises and if i don't want there to be a, a a carbon copy of twitter i want something different i want something new yeah exactly i want it's one live. where like i want one that's called weenus and we just show we just take <laughs> pictures of our weenus just like it's just like you take a little just just that <laughs> every day and you check in with the weenus and you're like hello <laughs> I'm you sorry. Give a progress report. <laughs> progress report on the weenus. How's it going? Is it ashy today? Is you? Is it moisturized? How are we doing? All right, guys. That's this is the show. Um, <laughs> one, one final segment or two. If you're a patron, patreoncom situation room, we're gonna talk about Avatar. Um, but okay, the word apparently the phrase of 2022 has been nepo baby. I'm not on TikTok, but apparently young folks are obsessed with nepo babies. Uh, that is children of industry, um, children whose parents are famous actors, directors, writers, um, I don't know, whomever, uh, generally in Hollywood, in music, etc. cetera. Um, and I kind of think this is inspiring a new segment on this show, which is, look, the revolution has come. It, it has come to, it is on the gate, is at the gates of, of every uh, gated community in Malibu. And... Um, we're coming for the Nepo babies, guys. We got a guillotine, a nonviolent guillotine, <laughs> and uh, we're taking them. We're taking the Nepo babies. We're taking all their loot, except we're going to spare one. We're going to spare one. So my the new segment is spare one, spare <laughs> one Nepo babies. What is a Nepo baby? Let me give you some examples. Maud Apatow, daughter of uh, Judd and Leslie Mann. Um, Zoe Kravitz. I'm not going to get into all their parents, but Lenny Kravitz's daughter. Um, Maya Hawk, Ethan Hawk and uh, Uma Thurman. Dakota Johnson, Schmiggity Boo and Schmiggity. Nick Kroll, who's just somehow a billionaire or a millionaire. Uh, Miley Cyrus. Taylor Swift, yes, an industry darling. SNL oh. writers. As there are two SNL writers whose parents are just SNL producers. Ben Stiller, Laura Dern, OG. Guys, remember Nora Jones is Ravi Shankar's daughter, but I love Nora Jones. Um, Henry Fonda, of course, OG. Jane Fonda's uh, Jane Fonda is Henry Fonda's daughter. The Scars Guards. There's a million different Scars Guards. <laughs> um, Vulture. Vulture did an article all about the Nepo babies, and um, I want to bring it up, see if I can uh, just bring it up here. Um, and there's so many that you didn't even know were children of famous people, and they're everywhere. They're coming out the woodworks, and, and it's kind of like I'm so bad with names and faces in Hollywood, but then I'll like, I looked at this article, and I'm like, oh, that's why they look so familiar, because they're all <laughs> children of other children of other children but we have to save one um thoughts and feelings sarah about nepo babies and who you're saving um you know look as a comedian and a person working in hollywood nepo babies um can be very annoying um but i think there's a distinction between and vulture's article did a pretty good job like breaking it down but like nepo baby there's the people who are born into a hollywood family and so like it's not just like, oh, your dad got you the job. Your dad taught you how to behave at an audition. Mm -hmm. Like, really, your, your dad, you know, it's like, and I worked at uh, Late Night with Jimmy Fallon when it first came on. Mm -hmm. And the interns for the first summer, the first oh. summer interns, really powerful people's children. Yep. Like Jimmy Buffett's mm -hmm. child, you know, yep. like, uh, not that Jimmy Man. Buffett's powerful, but like, or, but like the head of GE, like huge but, you know, and we were like, this intern could get me fired. Right. You know? so there's there's that level. But uh, this intern could get me fired. In fact, that is how Kevin Spacey um, was finally outed as the predator that he is, is because there was someone working on the set of uh, House of Cards who was like the kid of somebody important. And he he kind of like fondled the wrong fry line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or not well, for I, I think and I, th I think you know there's obviously there's nepo babies which uh 
a friend of mine made a good point. They're like, would you be mad at a cobbler uh, for their child being good at cobbling? Like, you know, yes. like if it runs in the family, fine. But it's the access. And, and then, then there's wealth, which Nick Kroll, I think, is more of a wealth child as opposed sure. to like, he's not a child of Hollywood. He's like his, he grew up super rich. Right. And um, mm -hmm. the, the, in, in Hollywood and in certain, I mean, I guess in every walk of life, having an yeah. enormous amount of wealth just makes things a lot easier. So whenever I hear a, a, a performer or an artist like waxing about how they don't, they never compromise. Like, Oh, I, I never do that. I won't take roles that aren't, you know, I'm always like, are you a Nepo baby? Cause like a lot of us <laughs> have to compromise in order to get, you know, I always sniff it out. I'm like, that just smells like Nepo baby. Anyway, I would save. Cause I was shocked to see her. Uh huh. <laughs> My friend, Kate Berlant. <laughs> what he's like down at the bottom wait uh, because her like mom her dad is an artist and her mom like it's i think they threw her on there to be funny it's like on the very bottom of like sort of like side. wait i gotta get there is it um, career swappers no it's like industry oh here we go Nepo, like, sons of actors the very bottom i was like why are you including her anyway i would save her and i'd save also um hannah einbinder uh lorraine newman's yes a friend i love and and so you know i i mean i think we well, don't want them to die obviously oh my god no. wait i have to find kate where is kate is that right here we there, go the very last one i feel like they did that as son a of a novelist and film critic mm -mm -mm. oh no no that's sorry no. that i daughter of a sculptor and oh, the woman who made, who made the stonehenge <laughs> for this is spinal that that is so <laughs> funny okay i think that's okay <laughs> i think it's all right nope she made that stonehenge that's tight though <laughs> i mean it is it's like i want to meet your mom kate <laughs> but that sculptor nepotism is kind of the most insidious we all know that you know like, yeah. like michelangelo's son was just had that fucking shoe in even though he it was mostly plato um I mean, yeah if you grow up with 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 our successful artists parents that's something I'm, I am, I'm envious of that. Like, that's just sounds like, wow, you just are like, you're just, you grew up in a super creative environment, but I know that there's like, there's yeah. also uh, problems that come with being a But this is the whole yeah. thing. I mean, it's like, it's again, the rich being wealthy and a creative person or a content creator. It's like, honestly, it's your parents and your parents' friends who like buy all your art and shit and like help you like fine art is full of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it it is it's just generally annoying um because it's also annoying i think because it's like well we could take a chance on someone unknown or we could take a chance on like the daughter of melanie griffin you know and yeah. you're like dakota yeah. johnson can't act i'm sorry um and someone else okay wait hang on john who who would you save sorry yeah i i'll say overall i'm I think as long as they prove themselves, it's not nearly as bad. Like you have to be legitimately good. Like I, I, I realized Jack Quaid from this list, but he's good. He's really good on the boys. He's not my favorite actor or anything, but right. But he's good, so I'm okay with him. Um, does it count if they're a sibling, or does it have to be kids? No, I think it counts. Okay, because I get. I mean, I'm inclined to say Elizabeth Olsen, who I think is legitimately <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, but I it's that she's not a nepo baby; she's a nepo sister. Yeah, I, I, I don't think that's Beanie super counts. Is, is um Beanie Felt? What's her name? Feldman. Beanie Feldman. Is it she the sister of Jonah Hill? Yes. I would is not that say a sibling. I would. I, I would. I would guillotine that. I'm sorry. I would not say that. <laughs> oh I did yeah, not. I, like I don't. I'm not familiar. I. I, I, but <laughs> I mean. So it's you're gonna annoying. They're Olsen. annoying. They're annoying. You're gonna save Elizabeth Olsen. That's good. I think I think Elizabeth Olsen saved generally because I think the Olsen twins. That's different. They were child actors. Yeah. You know. Um, then I'll do. I'll do a legitimate one then. Okay. Um, I know you. You've already mentioned this, but I. I really think Maya Hawk. So I. I was a huge fan of Stranger Things, and yes. uh, generally, whenever a new character comes in, I'm like, "Who the hell are you? <laughs> Who the hell are you to take screen time away from those kids?" And she 100% won me over. She is, I think, a very good actress. 
She's um, great. Obviously, she's been benefited by her parents or whatever, but she's great. So I'm going to She's I'm gonna just her. doing tweaky Ethan Hawke. Like, she's just like her dad. She's like, <laughs> just like the tweaky Ethan Hawke, but like in the lanky Uma Thurman. But I've um, never really loved Ethan Hawke that much. I like Maya Hawke better than <laughs> Ethan Hawke. Okay. I think she's eclipsed the parents. There you go. Can I just say, uh, this is, I'm just going to throw some shade. John David Washington, son of Denzel Washington, is not a good actor. I'm sorry. There's a perfect example of someone who's like, you got this job because you're fucking Denzel Washington's son, and you're not good. The Black Klansman wasn't good. Like, and it, and honestly, it's kind of on him. Like, he he just wasn't that good. Um, what's the other film that he's in? He's just not good. I'm sorry, y'all. He's not good. I, I think. Tenant, he was was I didn't see Tenant. Okay, I I admittedly did not see Tenant, but it just it's sad. It's sad that the son of Denzel Washington wouldn't be as amazing as Denzel Washington. But it happens. Go do something else. Be an accountant. Handle yeah. all your dad's money. All right. Obviously, I'm pissed about this, and <laughs> I think they're all trash, trash babies. Uh, except for I will save, I save Ben Stiller. I support the Stiller family. I, yes, um, love his dad, love him. He's excellent. Some of the best comedies, I think maybe ever, my favorite comedies have been him directing. Not really, a, not really a, like I could give or take or take or leave some of his acting things, but it's just all everything he directs. Severance. Yeah. Severance. Hello. Oh, the best fucking show that I don't know I if I mean. Wait for season two. Oh, it's going to be yeah. so good. You know, Ben Stiller tweeted one time that, that like Hollywood is a meritocracy and people were like, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what, you know what he did? He took it. He took the criticism and he like responded and was like, you know what? I, I, you're right. There is a lot of privilege that goes into, you know, and I, that made Thank me, you. Really, I, I, when somebody gets like attacked and dunked on or ratioed or whatever we call and they kind of take it and they're like, yeah, good point. I'm always impressed yeah. with people who can do that because I know that when you're being dunked on, it's it's the emotions go real high. And right. uh, it doesn't matter who you are, you can react very poorly. So I, I it made just me so like much it. easier to be yeah. trolled incessantly when you can like just like take a little break in your like soak tub, you know, or like go out to the, you know, go out to the hot tub for a second, um, then take a little like a little, you know, sauna, a little, like, I, I just, you know what I mean? After yeah. swimming a few laps in their incredible pool. Um, that's always <laughs> easier. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me for this Bituation Room. Been a little sillier of one. It's been fun. Um, I hope that, uh, you know, look, I had, I had a kid. She's going to have a, oh my God, if she wants to headline Roosters in Sunnyvale, California, <laughs> she's going to have a fucking leg up. All right. In the comedy world, if she wants to, if she wants to run an open mic in Silver Lake, oh my God, gross. Just like <laughs> gonna have all the stage time with all the weirdos. But uh that being said, Sarah Schaefer, where can people find you, follow your work, get tickets to your show? Um, Sarah Schaefer one for now. Um <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, on Twitter. But yeah, I've got a link tree in there, contraband or was <gasps> contraband for a day. Um, but yeah, come come see me do my show next year. I'm doing it all around. I am so excited. I will be getting tickets and going. Uh, please be very well. And uh, I may see you in the bonus. Uh, TBD on if Sarah's going to stick around for the Avatar discussion. John Idarola, where can people find Thank you? you? Uh, I'm still on Twitter for now. We'll see day by day. John Adorola, uh, the damage port. You can see me every day. You can see Francesca 20% of those days. Hey. And Francesca is actually going to be filling in for me a little bit next week, which is super exciting. And patreon.com slash John Adorola. If you also long for the days of books, I write uh, and release original fiction, fantasy and sci-fi, some inspired by Redwall. And we do a podcast breaking down stories every month. Amazing. Thank you so, so much, John. Uh, see you in the bonus, I hope. And uh, thank everybody here. 
Uh, let me read a few comments and um, it's just enough time to to uh, stall because we don't have any new $10 pa patrons, but I'm going to give you a chance to become a $10 patron. So patreon.com slash bitch agent room um, have said <laughs> I'm bitching that Fran didn't whip out boobs after the victory ar of Argentina. However, we, we did get to see Matt. That's true. I did promise a titty if Argentina won and they did and I didn't whip it out. Uh, but Matt, you got pretty much full nick nick matt um if you guys are wondering what we're talking about go to my instagram at franny Pio. um <laughs> paulo leverado says john is learning navi on duolingo he is he'll never speak it but he'll know exactly how to write it and everything fun p thanks for the super chat merry christmas francesca merry christmas to you and happy holidays uh jonathan lighter thank you so much for the super chat for dragon daddy and you happy solstice it is the darkest day of the year um Robert, thank you for your super chat. Francesca's blessed with excellent facial symmetry. And thank you. And there's nobody more deserving. Yes. Yes. I'd. You know what? My money is measured in my facial symmetry. Doesn't that get you anywhere in Hollywood anymore? Um, Noemi Green, I flash Francesca in Portland. Noemi, thank you so much for chatting us. Yes. Charles Guliano says, is SF Sketch Risk going to be streamed online somewhere? No, but it will be available after the fact on, on Tuesday of that week. Um, and Sticks Dragon, thank you for the super chat. I've been waiting for this for a long time. Happy Thursday, Franny and John. Uh, or that's Tuesday. Uh, Ian C would love a book tour of Francesca's shelf on the left. Ah, you're the second person to ask for one, I will be, let's do a, let's do a bonus. Let's do a bonus of just about my books. How about that? For all the patrons. Um, Matt Gates on a white for break Bronco. Thank you for the super chat. If cinema had a podcast, it would be called the B situation room. I think just the bitch would be like, she's going watch her start a podcast called the bituation room. Mark my word. She's going to do that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he says, uh, make sure you actually purchase the domain name before cinema does. Uh, let's do that right now. I need to do that. In fact, I think I own it, so it's fine. Um, Parker, thank you so much for your super chat. Congrats for correctly predicting Argentina would win the World Cup. Felt your pain yesterday when John didn't know who Messi played for. Uh-huh. Um, and Noemi Green, uh, thank you for your super chat again, saying hashtag not all Portlanders, not all Mexicans. My Dragon Squad t-shirt got stuck to my Francesca t-shirt. Tuesdays and Mondays are my favorite day of the week. Oh, Hef with your $20 uh, um, super chat. Happy holidays, Fran Peeps. Let's see. Charles Guliano again. Or no, sorry, I'm rereading everything. Uh, uh, uh. Um, we're saving Nick Kroll. We're saving Nora Jones. Camperman saving Liv Tyler. Um, let's see. And oh, ZKR99 is saving Bush Jr. Maybe. Um, and with that, y'all, this is I'm gonna add it to the stream. And maybe I'm just gonna have to dance it out. This is the fart song. Oh, man. Thank you so much to all the patrons at $5 or more. The new patrons, we have Gina Viola, who just became a patron. The Gina Viola? The? Thank you so much. You're wonderful. Thanks to Star Prude Home for also becoming a patron uh, at, I believe that's $10 uh, in Canadian. Thank you to the new Twitch subs, Kyle8315. Thank you to Roro Sarah Beth for cheering your bit. Thank you to Liguri Fina on Twitch for resubscribing or subscribing with Prime. Frank Morningtree for subscribing at Tier 1. Again, 12 months you've been subscribed. Happy anniversary, bro. And thank you to Brandy Lou 2 for subscribing, resubscribing with Prime. 21 months for Brandy Lou 2. Thanks to all of you. To Paige Omek, my producer, to Maximilian Inhoff, who's recovering from COVID, to Alexandra Orness, to Andy Vasoyan, who edits these podcasts. I will see all y'all talking Avatar in the bonus all by myself. You've been wonderful. I'll see you next week. Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>